Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 136. We have a full agenda today, so we're going to jump right into it. Before we do, quick reminder, these meetings are always recorded for those of us that aren't here right now, uh, aka you that are watching this. Uh, let's go to it. Agenda. Uh, we're going to do Wix 4 status up front, mostly because it hasn't changed significantly, and I just kind of want to move it forward. We'll do triage, and then we'll review a pull request, because I have some questions for Sean, and I thought they might be interesting to be out here. And then uh, Bob wants to talk about the great Wix bug purge, uh, which I think will be a great topic that we kind of had after the meeting last week. Um, so we're going to catch everybody up on that. And then, as always, we'll take questions and comments um, from the gallery. Carrying on, Wix. I didn't put this. I didn't move it. All right, we're gonna jump over this. All right, Wix four status. My slides are out of order. Um, the setup build is now working, so that means that working in quotes, being that you can now build from one end to the other, and the Wix tool set uh, like works to build its own MSIs. Now there are a lot of things missing because, as it noted, there's no burn and there's no extensions. Um, so not all the MSIs can be built and not everything in the MSIs can be built. But we do have the end-to-end -end working. Um, and so now we're operating within the repository reorganization to uh, fill in the blanks and get ourselves rolling on this new cool-looking Wix 4. Um, .NET Core 2.0 seems to be working out well now, kind of have it understood, working, um, setup has it, you know, integrated and all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, we're, we're rolling along right now. That, that looks good. Um, my focus right now has been in the um, compiler modernization um, with this pipeline model, which I know we haven't spoken in detail here about, so we'll do that sometime in the not too distant future. Um, but that pipeline model is being realized, and I hope to have a, um, a push here shortly so you can see that in the core, um, in the core repository. And uh, then we'll move on from there into the cool things that are going to be available after that work is done. So I know I said this last time, but I really do think that next meeting we will have more to share on that. It's very, very cool coming together. So Wix4 is rolling along. Um, I know we haven't had any builds or anything official for quite a while. Uh, that's because we're doing all this cool new work to kind of take Wix4 to the next level. Uh, and where it was going to looking kind of like a, I don't know, more of a minor major release, and now it's turning into actually having some cool stuff in it. So uh, more probably more in two weeks as usual. Carrying on, let's go do triage and pull requests. We'll get those things knocked down. Bob, you ready? Ready to go. All right. Six bugs, but only two. Or no, eight bugs. Two, six are closed, which is interesting. We just Someone open and pre triage. Ah, very good. Well, this is a, um, yeah, cute. Um, I guess it's not an issue. Um, burn variable of type version with no value causes burn to crash. Crash? Really? No. Just error without a useful error message. Okay. Yeah, it'd be great if it did better than that. So, uh, Wix 4, uh, 4x. And someone could fix it, unless someone wants to sign for it. But yeah, it's not the right way for that to work. Website news page title not set. Yeah, I didn't understand this. I click on it here. Oh, using Windows 10 browser. Well, I'm not using Windows 10, but there it is, right there. News, news, news. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Probably a Windows 10 Edge browser bug. Hey, look, another Windows 10 bug. Works for me on Windows 10 Edge, so... Oh, I forgot Bob's back on Windows 10. All right, whatever. Someone took the time to open a bug and doesn't... Uh, Visual Studio 2017 extension fails to install. Yeah. Sent this off to this place where we send them, off to the Visual Studio to go, hey, yeah, what went wrong? Because there's nothing helpful in here. Location based skew, reg root, hive, or right, whatever. All right. So hopefully they come back if there's actually something wrong with our package. But we control so little, it works for so many. Not so helpful. Progress dialog, copying. Oh, this is that Windows 10 issue again now, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Well, this is external, right? 
Yeah. Um, you know, the, as I pointed out a couple of days ago, without this Wix UI error progress text reference, we don't put any strings in. Right. And it's up to Windows to provide them, which is actually really kind of nice because it means you'll magically get localized strings, except for some reason you're now getting localized strings that uh, don't work so well. But you know, right. if you use Wix UI error progress text, you'll get localized strings, um, which isn't great if you were looking for you know free. They probably broke resources in Windows installer or something like that. Yeah, it's been this way for a while. They haven't uh, fixed it over the last couple of releases. But hey, we have a new one coming out next Monday. So, yeah. Uh, external. Yep. With standard BA language apparently not working correctly. Well, you had the wrong value. So everything was working perfectly. Apparently working perfectly. Excellent. So not a bug. Wix 403 f uh, fails to install. Oh, yes. Bob pointed out that that's two years old. Two-year-old do not always hang around for a long time. So go get a new build. So, yay. Uh, tool set does not install the correct location build tools. This guy pointed out these two issues, and he said, I have looked at them, but I didn't do what they said because I don't. I want to spend time here rehashing all of that, so we did. We pointed out, he said, I don't see how that would work, and then he tried it, and it all worked. So It is an un unintuitive behavior of a misbuild. Welcome to our world. Yes, so go do what the bugs tell you to do there. Or use the new templates, which, of course, we'll get to. All right. Sean, you ready? We're going to want to go through this pull request that has been growing because um, it's been kind of hanging out for a while, um, yeah. which is great because it's like finishing. Um, and there, in general, wasn't a big thing. This is generally switching from a um, a interface model to a uh, Call that what is it, a wind proc model? I don't know exactly what to call that, um, and I can't find it now. Um, I'm still struggling with this ref um, f cancel in the um, in the interface here. Do people see this on plan package when you implement iBootstrap application? Do you see this yourself? Uh, I mean, in, in managed code, you wouldn't, but in, in native, you would see the ref f cancel. Right, in native code, but this is, this is the managed code. So this, I mean, that cancel is just going to be in the args. So okay. there's just going to be a cancel property. like. Okay, just like it was it, before. Well, before, it had a result property. Right. And you had to know that this event actually supports canceling. Like, you know, some events, there was a whole bunch of events that were returning a result, and then you would have to know, you'd have to, like, look at the engine code to figure out which codes are actually acceptable in that event. Expected. Right, okay. This is, this is the whole ID retry, ID non, ID yes, ID okay. Yeah, ID restart, ID suspend, ID yep, right. ignore. And so now the cancel args are broken out as a separate property, but you, people don't see this ref. This is an internal implementation. Right, so manage code, instead of setting results equals cancel, now they'll say cancel equals true. Got it. And they, they can then set the H result for an error. True. Although you probably shouldn't be doing that from manage code. Although, yeah, that's the whole, do we catch exceptions and return their H results instead or something like that. Okay. So I guess we could do that, but I haven't done that. <laughs> no, I, it, that's a, a future thing. I was trying to find one. So these are now returning E not impl, and I was trying to remember, how do you get into this code? Um on the BA engine, like, you don't, this is not impl anymore. What is, 
so this is the uh, this is in progress basically so okay so since i haven't moved everything yet it's okay. sending across the context for the ba engine proc but it, it is also sending an i bootstrapper engine right so while we're in between you have to call the i bootstrapper engine methods for the ones that still haven't been ported over. Got it. And so if you get e not impl, you know the ones that have been ported over. Yeah. And really nobody should be seeing this, but this is a great thing to search for inside the code to know what has to get deleted at the end. Right. In phase five and or wherever we go. Automatic, <laughs> automatic to-do comment. Yes. I mean, I guess technically I could have left the implementations there, and until we move everything... You could have called either the new way or the old way. Right. That was what was confusing me. Was I was like, wait, which way is this going? Um, and now I understand. It's just kind of transient. It's a, it's a transition point. And I'm fine with that mode for transient, for this transient thing. It's fine. Um, I was trying to find the other one. OK. All these messages. That's essentially what this is, right? Rewiring all these messages to work. Yeah, there was like context. 54 of them or something like that. 54. Wow. It's, it's a much bigger API than I thought it was. Yeah. There's a bunch. I saw somewhere managed code that was using all caps it was the it's mostly the managed code I think that threw me. It was yeah, so I switched like on cache acquire complete like would probably be one of them. Yes. It's where I was um I stopped using the results and I created an action for it. And then um I guess in the manage code, I just had that enum as all caps for the actual right. enum type or whatever. Yep. Yeah, and it looked. No, that's naive. Is there any manage code in here? Not this one. Which one was There's... it? Well, on cache acquire complete, I would. Pretty sure that's one of them. Oh, I think I did cache. I did cache complete instead of acquire complete. Uh, um. There we go. Is this the one? So this is internal, right? This, we're still looking at internal implementation details. True. Okay, this is not though. This is public. Th that's public. And I actually, I kind of rewrote this one later. Okay. I'm looking at the first one. Maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> a bad example. Here. The cache verify complete would be. Here it is. There it is, right? At CPP. Right. Yeah, I saw some of these and the all caps. I was like, that's really weird. And that goes into this complete args, which is then public. Yeah, so they would say, like, action equals that dot none or retry. Yeah, I, I think we should make this prettier for managed code. I think we should okay. do that. We should put that that effort in. Yeah, here so, is. like, cache acquire complete action with, you know, capitalizing the start of the words? Yes. Cache acquire complete action. Yes. Inside our namespace. We'll take care of it. And these are fine. Like that. Yes. Cache acquire complete action. None. Retry. Yep. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool, cool. I'm not signed in. I will... Ex I will accept this and then 
move on from there. I guess the other interesting point was the actually the engine like get those get variables things. It was kind of weird how I had to do it. Where is that? Do you, you know an example? Like the bottom ones, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So like. I didn't see anything. In that. I I decided to make them pass in the buffer in the results struct. So like, it, I'm making them in the args. I'm or in in the results. There's a parameter like for the string that has both the count and the string buffer, mm-hmm. and for the for the version and the numeric, it's just the field. So like the results has a it has that um, that q w value, and then like the that's kind of weird. So this is the size of the variable? Well, it's actually it is the variable for the ver- for the version and oh, yeah, numeric. For the version it is, you're right. That's not a good example. Is there another one in here? Or I'm I'm looking at the version it, one. Yeah. I guess the string's string a little one. more interesting. As they always are. So, like, in the results, it has the CCH value and the WZ value. So, it, I just thought it was a little weird having to pass in, like, the person making the call is having to set stuff in the results, but I didn't really see a better way around that. Because like the the args is supposed to be const, right? What else comes out in the results? Uh, I think it's just it's just the string. Yeah, it's just the string and the count. Any reason not to have them be... Like, why this struct, then? Because everything has an arg struct and a result struct. Yeah, and so this is the variable string struct. And so the question is, is it better to deviate from that result struct for this API that they call... Well, this is the internal one. Right. This is internal. That's, yeah, that's right. This is the internal. So what does the public API look like? Where's that one at? Is that down farther? Here it is. Yeah, here it is. So the managed looks the exact same. And the native also looks the exact same. Yeah, this is fine. I mean, see, this is an internal implementation detail, right? Yeah, as long as long as everyone is using the our interfaces instead of trying to use the message interface directly. Oh, because the message interface returns this uh, this block. Right. So Jacob, they do have to alloc the result before calling. Yeah, this has to match. This has to be set to the size of this. Should should there be copies incoming in args that we then copy into results just to keep it kind of consistent where args is incoming, results is outgoing? Well, technically, the everything's supposed to be constant in the args. So, at some point, we would have to cast away the const if we wanted to write to that wz value buffer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
so if we don't touch the value in the args struct um, and just you know copy it and cast it as needed to you know go from lpcwstir to pwstir. Yeah, I guess yeah. it's a question of whether we want to cast away the const or make them pass it in the results like that. Right, right. These are essentially interfaces. Like the, the, what this is doing is um, allowing us to extend this interface in the future. These are these but are interfaces. That's a function level. Um, yes, like like we technically speaking, because of the size here, we can add more things to the end of this struct so that get variable string can take more parameters. Is what this has right. allowed us to do. Right. Um, now we can't take in more param any. We can take in more optional parameters. We can't take in in more required parameters, but optional may be useful as well. Um, and that's what we're getting. Because otherwise, we could make this API this you know, return value from this a little more normal and have it just return, you know, you feed in the string and the size of the string and then we feed back out the answer. Um, which would be the normal kind of get me a string thing. But we wouldn't be able to extend it in the future. Problem. So it's just that this does look a little weird compared to what you would normally expect. But it's very normal lies in the API because everything does this. Right, Sean? Right. Everything looks this way. I mean, I guess another way we could have done it is somehow make it to where the, the caller gives like a free function or you know, so if we could somehow let the engine allocate the string and then rely on the caller to free it, or the other way around, I don't remember which. But basically, if we make e both sides give each other free functions, and then it would make... Or just let the engine always cache it and just free it at the end. It, that would that would just allow us to get rid of the CCH value. We would still have this essentially this box around the WZ value. Well, basically, it, it but then the caller doesn't have to allocate that WZ value. Correct. That 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 those are two different problems. Um, to look at one is the shape of the API, which is what these structs are giving us, and the other is how do you do memory management for strings and maybe other things. Those are two different problems. And I guess with this, how we're creating the API like this, we could, in the future... Yeah, see, this hides and, the boxes. This is fine. And really, I guess I could have... Uh, we could update the interface, the iBootstrapper engine, to where you don't require the caller to allocate that anymore. So like right now, you're still requiring the caller to the side bootstrapper engine to pass in an already allocated string. But we could, I could update this to do the allocation inside of here. Yeah, but you won't know when to let go unless you do like you know Bob said, and you let go at the very end. Well, since this is closer, yeah, I guess it's still. You won't know true. when they're done with the string, right? They have to tell you when they're done with the string, or you have to wait until the end of time. Well, or, you know, shut down. We're not talking heat death of the universe here. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> well, this sure. could... I mean, once it returns the value, we could... Well, I guess it's. I guess we would require the caller of this to be using the same free function that 
lines up with how this allocated it. But right, yeah, the, which we don't expose today. I mean, the downside to see, yeah, we we we'd have to have you know public function somewhere to allocate and free. We don't want to. I don't think we want to go there. No, I I don't think I. I mean, we're fine where we're at right now. I mean, it's. It's fine. I, I think this looks all fine because the the interface to this actually is standard, right? It's like uh, I made this a little bigger. I was I lost it. Oh, come on. There we go. Ah, is that more than one? Uh, I guess that's right. Yeah, this is fine. So they call get variable string. It's fine. It's just if they call the engine proc directly, they have to understand these structs way, the struct way of doing this, which is exactly this. Right, you know, you initialize this, fill it in. Initialize this, fill it in. Initialize the args, pass them in. Initialize the results, pass them in. Call the the proc, and it's all very um, future safe. So, in general, though, do you expect people to use the procs directly? Um, At least on the engine, it looks to me on the engine side that there's there's enough boilerplate that, you know, the uh, whatever uh, class this is here, which I'm guessing is just the replacement for iBootstrapper engine. This is, uh, yeah. Ball okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, see, now that's very interesting. Okay. So it essentially is the replacement for iBootstrapper engine, and we're just, uh, we're now really, really pushing people toward using the base class, which is fine. That's what we did before. Um, it's now it's just you really don't want to use the interfaces or the sorry now the proc directly. Yeah, except that you when would you use the proc directly when you want to be more future safe? I guess when you want to when you want to actually write a BA that does something different based on the engine version. Or can survive engine versions. Right. Well, it doesn't require a recompile for every engine update. Well, the you don't require recompile if you're building against the interfaces. Mm, if they change, Be you do. Well, the interfaces. Yeah. So you can once you compile your BA, it doesn't matter whether you compile against the interfaces or the proc. That BA oh, that's should right. be able to be used. Because it's calling the proc engine inside itself. True. And because ball yellow gets included with you. Right. Yes. There. That. That's that's it. That's it. That's why we're doing all this. Yeah. So the ball yellow is a snapshot in time of the BA proc that you are using. Why would you use the BA proc directly? You wouldn't, but it allows your BA to keep working as burn changes underneath you. That's what it does. It gives it a degree of freedom on the burn side. So then, really, the only it's been so long since time, about this. yeah, the only time I could see you calling the proc directly is for some reason you want to write a BA that does extra with a newer burn engine, or, but can still fall back to an older one. Right. Oh, assuming that ball based your own ball -util. application. You're writing your own ball util that can span burn engines. Yeah. So when you say ball util, you're you're talking about Base Bootstrapper app, right? Like the, like this. A, a nice yeah. interface between the BA and the burn. Yeah, burn. You, you, if you're one of those people, of which I don't think there will be many, you need to understand these structs. And at that point, Sean, I'm not worried about it. This is this is the way to do it because this gives us the um, future proofness in the engine side, right? And people will move their BAs forward only when they recompile against the latest library, really. I mean, in practicality. Yeah. Now, one one thing we've changed that I don't think this would affect is the one time or two times that we changed some enum values, and that broke the no recompile promise, which we're fine with. We basically said rebuild. Yeah, but that was because we didn't, because we had the recompile problem anyway. That we just kind of went, yeah. meh. Now in Wix 4, because we have the sensibility points, we would have to rethink those kinds of decisions. Okay, okay. We could not be as blase as we it, were in Wix It was like, hey, we could do a lot of work to do this, but you know, they have to recompile anyway, so why bother? 
Yeah, okay. All right. Now it's going to be like, hmm, so those people that don't have to recompile, we need to handle that. Yep, okay. Not yeah, so these these engine ones are actually breaking changes I'm making here because uh, I'm I'm moving the detect message value down. <laughs> Because for whatever reason, I decided to do detect first, even though it's one of the last methods in the interface. Yeah, now's the time to do that. <laughs> yeah. Now is the oh, just, time in Wix 4 to be doing those kinds of breaking changes. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that technically, these are breaking changes that I'm making here because I'm changing the enum value oh, of the yes. message. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, this is... And, and that's fine. Nobody should be shipping a burn against Wix 4 and not expect to be, you know, recompiling and fixing their code when using Wix 4 right now. So, it, at some point we will lock this down and that that is definitely not today. Cool. All right, I have refreshed a bunch of my memory and things make more sense and I've got the interface better. I've always been because I haven't been in this code enough you know, and it's been in transition. I was having a hard time getting where the interface definition was, and this clarified the interface definition. These structs are on the inside of the typical interface definition. Most people sure. will not see these structs. That's the right. important part. Yeah. All right. Cool. Excellent. Uh, like I said, I will move this forward. Um, Bob, I do not have a... Um, slide for your great Wix bug purge thing. Um, and I remember pieces of the conversation. Can you lead this conversation? I can follow along? Sure. All right, good. I'm glad you remember more than I do. <laughs> I don't remember more than you do. I just wrote it down. <laughs> Huge advantage. Carry on. Yep. Uh, okay, so so we talked about this, as Rob mentioned, after the meeting ended last week. Um, basically, just to kind of, you know, uh, so right now we have 877 open issues, um, and we have 36 pages of them um, that go all the way down to May 19th, 2004. That's the, that's an old bug, right? <laughs> and actually, of course, it's not a bug; it's a feature. Um, and in fact, that feature is support proc ID ref. Well, that's interesting. How much effort are we going to put into supporting proc IDs in this particular instance of of their use? Um, well, it's been 13 years and no one's you know done it yet. Um, and you know you can go back pages and look at the bugs that are you know even just more than 10 years old, and just kind of go, this is all very interesting, um, but in huge swaths of time, it has not you know, bubbled up to, anyone, to the top of anyone's to-do list. Um, now, there are bugs that are old, perhaps not quite that old, um, that still see some activity, still see some interest from people. Um, so what we talked about that, uh, two weeks ago was that we should look at, uh, segregating bugs that are, that are old and that haven't received attention or even interest, um, to give us a more manageable number of, of bugs to look at as we, you know, finish Wix 4 and move on into the, you know, 4.x versions as well. Uh, so where we ended up with, I believe, according to my notes, um, is we want to look at all bugs that are open but haven't seen any activity in more than two years. For those bugs, we close them, assign them, <laughs> oh, this is funny, to the respawn point milestone, tag them as not dead yet, um, I'm still going to figure out a way if I can work, you know, a Monty Python dead parrot thing into there. Um, and then add a paragraph to be written that basically describes what we're, what we're doing here, which is basically just to say, look, at the moment, 
no one's going to work on this bug, so we're not going to keep it open. Um, it, it allowed us focus on bugs that are probably of more interest to more people. Um, it's not to say we think they're bad things and shouldn't be done, but it's yeah unlikely to be something that we work on um, anytime in the near future. Um, all you have to do is comment, and you know we'll take another look. Especially if your comment is to say, "Hey, here's a pull request," or you know, "How would I fix this?" or whatever. Um, it's it's you know it, it's it's a realization that with limited resources, you know, we got to focus. And 877 is a lot of things to try to focus on at once. So. And I remember taking a harder line on the comments saying, if you're interested, if you want to say me too, you can give it a thumbs up on the, you know, on the bug report. Um, otherwise, we will unceremoniously delete comments that say me too. Just if, if you're not signing up to take the bug and you just want to, you know, if you're not adding any value to the bug, like here's more repro steps, which may or may not have value um, until someone tries to fix it, uh, then if you want to say me too, you can go get a thumbs up, but otherwise don't bother leaving comments on things that you're not going to do anything to fix. Basically comes down to someone needs to fix this bug if it's going to get fixed. And I'm fine with that in general because, again, yeah, these bugs have been around for a long time. Um, yeah, open source, scratching an itch. Uh, you, you, we need something to to move this stuff along. And uh, you know, saying, "Well, but I really want this," is not sufficient. No. Nope. If it's been two years and nobody stepped up for it, it's just probably not going to happen. Um, it's been rare so far. No reason to expect that to change. Right. Do you remember how many bugs that would take us down to? How many uh, bugs that would no. take us down? No. Okay. I have not run. I have not run the query on that. Uh, but you know, again, you look at the the number of bugs um, that are back back in the back in the aughts. Uh, there's quite a few. Well, how far? Oh, this isn't showing me the year, or is it? Maybe that is this year. Oh, there's 2016. Yeah. yeah. So we said two years. Yep. So one more page. Am I there? One more page. 2016. It's 2017 now, so I'm still within a year, right? Hmm. Go on page eight. It's gonna make me. There's 2004. Fifteen. So if we do this near the, let's say we do this at the end of the year, this is all. All right, I'm on page eight. And how many did I? How many bugs did we say per page? Twenty, twenty-five. I think it's twenty-five. Yeah. So twenty-five times eight. Oh, how nice! What is that? Four hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Wait. No. This, this is simple math. Twenty-five no. times eight. 25 times 4 is 100, so 25 times 8 would be 200. 200. There. 200 bucks. So we cut 600 plus. Yeah. Basically. Done. And they're not... And they're on respawn point simply because, hey, you could make this come back. Right. Exactly. They're closed. They're not nuked. They're not, you know... Uh, they're not fixed. They're, they're not fixed. Definitely not fixed. But uh, you know, it, it basically, it, it boils down to who's who's going to do the work. Yep. 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 So there we go. All right. So I will I will work on the yeah. You know, figured I'll write a little tool to call the GitHub API to do this. Um, I'll give some notice before I pull the trigger. Maybe we can even pull the trigger during a meeting. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Watch our bug counts go immensely down. Now that's triage. Until you get banned, but yeah. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many calls you have to make, though. How many pages did you say there was? 30. 36. 8 to 36. Mm. 6 or 700. And they might complain. 
I don't know. But how well, many. I don't know. Uh, well, I have to be authenticated to do this, so yes. that might be, you know, I'm and I'm doing it in a repo I'm on, so maybe they won't ban me. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll probably have Wixbot do it, so you don't have to get tagged with them all. Please, but, yes. <laughs> but Wixbot is also a member of the Wix tool set, so things like that. Yep. All right, so that's how we're going to take our bugs from 877 open, of which easily, you know, I expect we're going to get to, you know, 800 of those we don't care about, um, and we'll go from there. And the first sweep will be 600 and some, but I expect we'll get ourselves down to many far fewer that are open for any amount of time. For sure. And and the nice thing about, you know, doing it time-based is that we can rerun these you know, yes. on a given time and yep. just say, yeah, it, now this one's older than two years, so... <laughs> Every six months. Right. Yep, yep, yep. And then duping things to respawn points is going to be very interesting. Hmm? Because it'll be like, hey, I want this bug. Cool. Wait, that bug's closed. Uh, it's waiting to be respawned. <laughs> How do I fix it? There's a great story to go read at the bottom of that issue that will tell you exactly what you need to do to get this bug fixed. So you know, I somebody probably, else to do it. And I'll be like, nope. I should probably write that nice story then, shouldn't I? Uh, we'll have to have that story before we, we yeah. push pull the trigger on actually updating these things. Yep. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So a little bug clean up there. I, I also think it will probably better represent what we actually view as bugs inside the Wix tool set. Yeah, and obviously the older you get, the more there are features That's um, true. than bugs. That's true. And, yeah, Nothing wrong with features, but... yeah, That's the problem with calling this an issue tracker, is that it's generally viewed as a bad thing. Um, and giving it an icon like this, it's like, oh, bad thing. Um, yeah. sort, sort, more well, than, important thing, certainly. Um, but you know, if you look at other repos, there's there's a philosophy behind different organizations and their use of issue trackers. Um, you know, some keep it, some use them for everything. Some keep stuff open indefinitely. Yeah. Um, they use it for discussions. They, yeah, you know, um, and maybe that's maybe that works for for larger orgs. Um, I think I think for Wix having too many open issues is just it's it's not helpful. It's, it's distracting. It doesn't... You have uh, to have someone dedicated to your bugs if you're going to do those kinds of things. Or you have to have a much smaller project. Or you have to not treat them as you know, important. Again, too many yes. too many priority zeros is you know, it's not useful. It's true. All right, I think that'll be interesting guidance, especially when we start closing a lot of them, duping bugs to them. People will hopefully see a nice, clear message that explains what they need to do with bugs, which hopefully will track that, track, uh, reduce the amount of when are you fixing this bug um, type things, which is a very frustrating thing to get. So I'm hoping that we can head that off. Yeah. All right. Questions, comments, things that are for other people, things they want to talk about. One, two, three. No? Going? Wow. Did we just have an hour? We almost had an hour meeting. It's been a while since we did one of those. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, on that note, uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. I think everything is normal then. Wow, it's going to be close to Halloween at that point. <sighs> this year has flown by. Uh, you guys have a good couple weeks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.